Why did so many ancient Egyptians wind up in the bellies of Europeans? It's a pretty grim answer. The ancient Egyptians were a very alien people in many ways. Even in their own time, the complexities of Egyptian cosmology failed to travel well, and modern minds have even more difficulty with it. The Egyptians believed in a rich and vibrant afterlife. To reach it, one soul had to pass a series of tests, avoid annihilation by the crocodile-headed Amit, and then pass on into the realm of Sakitaru. Here, 15 gods rule over 15 separate regions, some of them benign and some of them inhumanly hostile. A newly arrived soul in Sakitaru Kitaru would need spells to protect it from snakes, giant beetles, and curses. It would need farming equipment, pets, servants, gold, food, items of comfort. It would need a vessel for the journey, and its body would demand preservation for the world beyond. In other words, the ancient Egyptian mummy was a traveler through time and space, its body suspended in a deathly state en route to another universe. Unfortunately, these ancient astronauts were intercepted by corpse-eating European ghouls. You're familiar with the ghoul I trust, this species of corpse-eating humanoid emerges from the legends of pre-Islamic Middle Eastern countries. They are tomb raiders, corpse defilers, demonic entities, and human cannibals turned monster. They feast on the dead for nourishment, prophecy, and even curative reasons. Now perhaps the ghoul of legend has always resonated with us because humans have long shared their appetite for the dead. From ancient tribal mortuary cannibal rites to modern blood transfusions and tissue transplants, we've never been that shy about taking another's flesh. And so our ancient Egyptian travelers did not wake from their sarcophagi into the realm of Sakita Ru. Instead, their bodies found their way to Victorian unwrapping parties and apothecary workshops. According to Egyptologist Salima Ekrem, from the 12th century CE onward, a holocaust of the undying transpired in the Middle East, and especially in Europe. These preserved corpses were destroyed for sport, treasure hunting, greed, and even as kindling for fires. Most shocking of all, thousands of mummies perished in the apothecary's corpse grinder for use in medicine. Yes, welcome to the world of medicinal cannibalism, where humans drink gladiator blood and consume honeyed cadavers. According to Maria Dolan, writing for Smithsonian.com, from the 12th to the 17th centuries, Europeans couldn't get enough mummy powder. They used it in the treatment of everything from headaches and erectile dysfunction to stomach ulcers and tumors. They drank it in tinctures, they mixed it into salves, and it takes no leap of faith to imagine these ground-up human remains found their way into suppositories as well. I mean, imagine cryogenically suspended space travelers consumed by ravenous aliens, and you land pretty close to the tragedy of the ghoulish fate of the Egyptian mummy. It's all that more tragic in that this appetite for mumia is based on a misunderstanding. See, it all hinges on bitumen, the world's first petroleum product. It's a sticky, black, viscous substance, and you probably know it better as asphalt. But it was highly prized in the ancient world, and for the longest, it was primarily a Mesopotamian monopoly. The substance saw use in various endeavors, including boat caulking, art, cosmetics, but physicians in the region eventually used it to treat a number of ailments. Word had spread that the ancient Egyptians had used bitumen as a preservative in their mummies. The word mummy even comes from the Persian word for wax, mumia, used to describe bitumen. Yet while the Egyptians used bitumen occasionally from about uh, 1100 BCE onward, they largely used resins and oils in their mortuary practices instead. Dead. But the ghouls of Europe didn't know this. Their mumia-based medicines contained equal parts magical thinking and placebo effect. The treatment seemed to work, so the honored dead of Egypt continued to find their annihilation in the apothecary's mortar. When mummies were scarce, contemporary cadavers were simply dried and pulverized to produce an imitation product. The practice didn't fall away entirely until the 18th century, and actual bitumen still sees limited use in modern Iran as a skin treatment. In the end, we'll never know exactly how many immortality-seeking Egyptians found their ultimate oblivion in the gullet of a ghoul. Now, it's easy for us to look back in time and say, oh, well, that was just really crazy. But what kind of stuff are we doing today that you think uh, future societies will look back on with as much revulsion as we reserve for the mummy-eating ghoul? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure you hit that subscribe button so we can keep these videos coming at you.